Hey Frederick, how you doing? Yeah. Another year, good. another Nam. Not pretty too good. Voices, good to be back. Voices holding up okay, it sounds like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's just, so far so good, yes. So uh, we're with Bitwood Studio. Um, as ever, there are always updates. So what are you showing us today? Well, I'm gonna um, just show you a few new things that we announced with version five that was uh, came out this week. And we're gonna scratch the surface of some of the new features five big ones and yeah let's uh, get started and okay, run, yeah. run them through so uh, let's start with just a blank slate nothing in here and uh, let's see if we can start adding some content i know content is a bad word these days but you know this is um, a big part of bit studio 5 are the new browsers that we've been working on and uh, when you click any plus button, you can start adding things to your project. And it opens up in, in this mode because I'm in an instrument track. I probably want to add an instrument, right? So right now we're seeing a list of all the available instruments, the Bitwig devices. And if we scroll further down, we have the plugins that are installed on this machine and then presets that are relevant to yeah. our context. And the idea is to have kind of a flat list. So they just show everything and then let me kind of narrow down that list. Instead of having things like separate into you know, silos more or less, it's more like a, yeah, just a flat hierarchy so you can immediately get access to your content. So uh, let's go ahead and add a polymer synthesizer to our project. I'm gonna hit confirm. And I'm not going to play the keyboard here today, so I'm just going to add a, a clip that's available through our library. So I'm going to go ahead and click the plus up here in the clip launcher, and this opens up the browser again, but now it knows... So it's context aware. Yes, it's a context aware. It knows I probably want to add a clip at this point, right? And as you can see, I see all my clips, and that's quite a long list, but I happen to know that this creator, Dave Lindenbank, has created a nice clip called Dreamtime. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add this. So let's play this back. It's gonna be pretty dry because there's not much sound design happening. Let's go up an octave. And we need to make it go a little bit faster so we can hear what's happening. All right, so I've added an instrument. It's just a dry synthesizer. I probably might want to add something more to add a bit flavor. So let's go ahead and click the plus after the device. And it br brings up the audio effects browser because after an instrument, usually that's an audio effect, so right? Context away, yeah, right. so let's just go ahead and do a little bit of search here because that's my favorite workflow. It's just type in a few letters and we already have a reverb. And after the reverb, let's go ahead and add a delay. And here you have kind of one of the small nifty things about the browser. It's, it's like suggesting me that maybe I'm looking for the category delay. And now I'm right. seeing like everything that's related to that category. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a, a delay plus. And OK, so now we have our little synth line. Okay, nice. Maybe we want to have a drum beat to that, so let's go ahead and add something else. We're gonna go ahead and click the, the plus button again, and it's suggesting me things that I might want to add. Let's pick a, a drum machine, which is our, uh, yeah, our basic drum machine container device. Clicking the browser again from within the drum machine opens up the browser, and it's showing me all the available presets that I have. I'm a friend of search, so I'm going to go ahead and search for my favorite preset. It happens to be a barefoot kit. And we want to have a clip, but this time I'm going to choose from something from Christian Vogel. And yeah, let's just listen quickly what's happening here. Yeah, so we've added up a bunch of 
things already to our project and the browsers are there to kind of just get the job done, be invisible, be quick, be user-friendly, and uh, that's what we're trying to achieve with the new browsers. Gotcha. Um, another thing that I'd like to show you really quick is that many times you are, maybe you get this new cool sound package downloaded from, from bitwe.com or wherever your source is, and it might be sometimes a challenge to find, okay, where's the actual content of that pack? So what we've done here is we've included the package manager in a sense, so I can, I don't know, let's pick Let's pick an artist pack, let's go into Christian Vogel again, and here you see everything that's part of that package. It might be a device, it can be a preset, it might be a sample, and again, that's this kind of flat hierarchy thinking of the new browser. So you're driving video. it with the kind of the icons, really, that tell you what's, what, the icons show you what the, what the yeah, content is. Yeah. Exactly, yes. All right, so let's jump into the next feature of version five, and that is uh, kind of a, a top requested feature for a couple of years, which is MSEX. So give us MSEX, we want MSEX. MSEX is something you might have heard about from some famous synthesizers. It's a, well, multi-stage envelope generator, usually. And when we started digging about and thinking, okay, what is actually an MSEG and what do people actually want? Do they want an envelope or do they want an LFO? Do they want a sequencer? Uh, in the end, we decided to give them everything, all of that. So that's why we have five different MSEG related devices, modulators, and modules that we'll have a quick look at. All right, so uh, the modulation system of Bitwig Studio is already quite powerful. All of the devices, instruments, audio effects, plugins, etc., have the modulator panel, right? So in this case, in Polymer, I'm just going to go ahead and add a new modulator. And let's dive straight into one of the new MSEG related modulators called Segments. So Segments is kind of like an envelope geared modulator with typical controls that you want to see in an envelope and you have time settings, you know, let's keep it at one bar, it's polyphonic, and let's just click the waveform to open up the, the new editor. And this allows us to freely draw the envelope shape in this case. So uh, it's just a matter of dragging points, creating new points, dragging them up and down. Currently we have a snapping of four, we can change that to something a little bit more. Right, so custom modulator. And we also have loop points. So actually, let's play this back to see it in action. And let's assign it to something like the filter. And let's maybe start using some uh, shapes. Yeah, so that's the segment. That's uh, an envelope geared modulator. Uh, let's uh, pick a second one called Curves. And Curves is essentially the same, but with controls that is suitable for an LFO. So it's already looping, as you can see. It's a cyclical modulator. Clicking the waveform again, we have exactly the same editor. We can do the exactly the same kind of actions and create our custom wave shapes like this. And the cool thing is that there's also a browser for the different um, waves and curves. Right, yeah. And these are all, well, what you're seeing here are the curves that we've created for you, essentially part of the Bitwig library. These can, of course, be your own. You can save these and uh, do whatever you feel like here. but. Um, the cool thing is that they're all one format. So um, any waveform that I might create in curves, for instance, I can save and load up in my other ah, okay. MSEC, right. right? So that's a new format as well called a BW curve that is you know, global through all the MSEC related devices. All right, so we are in Polymer. And Polymer is, um, is a synthesizer where you can exchange modules. So let's go ahead and exchange the oscillator here to a scroll. And this is another MSEC 
uh, module that we have, and this is essentially just a, a drawable oscillator. It's again the same type of editor that we saw from the other MSEG uh, related m modulators, and we can again, you know, load and save any waveform that we feel like. By the way, the envelope section of Polymer also has segments, the, the new MSEC envelope. To see the other MSEC related things, we need to open Polygrid. So let's go ahead and open our browser, type in a few letters and open up our good old Polygrid. Okay, let's type in MSEG in the module palette and we see all of the things. We see curves we recognize from before as well as segments. So that's all now, interchangeable, right? Yes, yes. Now as grid modules, we have certain controls that are suitable for their use case. But we also have slopes and slopes is kind of like a free form sequencer, if you will. We have transfer, which is a freely drawable wave shaper that transforms your sounds in interesting ways. And we have scroll again. So in total, five different modulators, modules, that all have this new drawable editor to it. Nice. Okay, so let's jump into the next feature, which is, I'm gonna open a new project for that, and I prepared Okay, like a small, small section, uh, and it's all about clip launching, right? Okay. So usually when you launch clips, let's launch something here. Usually it's all about like, you know, starting from number one at a certain quantization, right? With Bitwit Studio 5, we also built in like an alternative mode. So right now I'm just holding the Alt on the keyboard to kind of temporarily launch. rarely launch other clips and scenes just to give me more freedom as a performer to just kind of like jump in and out of ah, so it, ju it just comes on and then and when you let go it's gone so you can just put yes. it in for a number, I mean, that's, a number that's, of beats effectively yeah. yeah I mean that's all configurable of course but we kind of started with what we think is a sensible setting for you to take off from so uh, we're already how many minutes into the presentation, yeah. but we haven't covered uh, the <laughs> all the goodies just yet. So uh, let's have a quick look at what I think is really cool, and that is uh, track remotes. So now in the mix view, there's a new panel which is uh, showing me track remotes. These are now like predefined for this particular project, but we can create something new, and let's just quickly add like an equalizer to an empty track, right? So now you see this part is empty and I can define it myself. Just gonna go ahead and click the plus button and start linking up kind of remote controls here. Just to give you a very quick example of how this can ah, be done. And okay. I now have... Channel, like channel macros almost, right? Channel, well, it's remote controls, but you know, it's kind of like a way to customize your, your mixer in a sense. Especially useful, I think, in live performance situations where I don't need to dive into each track to kind of grab what, what's the current status of my filter. I just have it right here. Yeah, nice. Okay, so I'm gonna round things off quickly with just a mention of project modulators. So the paradigm of Bitwi Studio has been that modulators can be added to devices, instruments, effects, note effects, and so on. We've actually elevated now that paradigm into the uh, project level. So, um, for instance, we've added this section here where a modulator panel for the project. Let me just grab an LFO here to show you what I mean. So I've now added an LFO on the project level and I'm gonna assign it to this synthesizer here in this track, but I can now jump into a different track and ah. I have the same LFO going to so another like device. Kind of glo global, effectively. Global, yeah. exactly. That's and really. that's not all. We also have it on global kind of parameters, like the mixer, for instance. Now, you know, adding an LFO to a mixer might not be the most sensible use case, 
but it looks nice. It looks nice, and I believe something like a macro might be more usable. Let's say I want a particular section of my song. A lot of things should happen, and I can just control it with one knob. It can be a button, it can be a sequencer, it can all be, be all of these things. Oh, that's neat. And I guess you could assign it to a MIDI control of some That's kind. right, yes. Yes, sir. So that's only scratch scratching the surface, but that's what I'm going to show you today. Oh, thank you very much. And this is uh, available now? It's not beta? Is it out of beta? It's in beta at the moment. We announced uh, earlier this week. So we hope to have it done uh, out in this quarter this year. So in the next couple of weeks. Thank you very much. My pleasure.